And we're looking at piecewise functions here. Number 29, we're going backwards a little bit. I know I had to work through 42, but we didn't uh, really hit any of these. Um, you could be asked, is it continuous? Or I've seen these problems phrased, uh, find the value that would make it continuous. Well, remember with a piecewise function, we had two situations. Okay, either the two pieces uh, didn't meet up, we had like a jump. Okay, that's not continuous. Or we could have had one where they just look like two different functions. Okay, say they meet like this. All right, those are two different linear functions there, but they do meet at that changing point. That is a continuous function. So, um, for number 29, if we're asked the limit as we approach 2, it's not a left handed or a right handed limit, it's just as we approach 2. So, we've got to consider both sides. So, in this case, we need to plug 2 into both pieces and see what we get. Okay, so we're going to plug it into the first piece. We've got that negative is in front of that. We apply it after the squared. So that gives us negative 4 plus 4, which is equal to 0. The second piece is always negative 3. Negative 3 is not equal to 0, so this limit does not exist. The limit as we approach 2 of this function does not exist. D and E does not exist because the left-handed and the right-handed do not agree. Okay. Now, if it asks us for the left-handed limit, the answer would be 0. If it asks us for the right-handed limit, the answer would be negative 3. But it, it asks us for the two-sided limit. Those two numbers have to agree. So that limit does not exist. That means this is not a continuous function. Okay, Those two pieces don't match up. This is not a continuous function. Number 30 asks us another piecewise function as we approach 2. Same thing. We want to plug it into both pieces. Well, the first piece is always 5. The second piece, let's see, we've got 2 squared minus 8 times 2 plus 17. That's 4 minus 16 plus 17. That's negative 12 plus 17, which is 5. 5 is equal to 5, so this limit does exist. As this function approaches 2, this limit is equal to 5 because the left side and the right side equal the same value. Now, I've seen problems where they have like an extra variable in here. They have like a C or something. And they say, what value of C would make this function continuous? You do the same thing. You plug in the 2 for the X values. But to be continuous, they have to equal each other. So you set those two pieces equal to each other and you solve for the C. Okay, I don't have an example like this right at this moment, um, but that's what you would do. You plug in the two, they have to equal the same value, so you set them equal to each other and then find that value that they're asking for. Okay, uh, we can talk about limits at vertical asymptotes as well. Let's look at number 43. So to number 43. If we're asked what's the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left of this rational function, x minus 3 over x squared minus 2x minus 3. Now we could plug in negative 1. If we plug in negative 1, let's see what we get. Because that should always be your first reaction with a limit is to plug it in. Now we don't get 0 on the top. That's good because usually that's the issue with rational functions. But on the bottom, let's see what happens. So we've got negative 4 in the numerator. We've got 1 plus 2 minus 3. That gives us 0 on the bottom. Are we allowed to divide by 0? No, that is undefined. So that means we can't do this algebraically. We've got to rely, um, technically you can do it with a little bit of reasoning. But I'm going to refer you to the calculator. Okay, your exam is calculator active, so there's no reason to not use uh, the graphing capabilities of your calculator. Uh, the only thing that you got to remember is you got to put parentheses. You got to put parentheses around the entire numerator and around the entire denominator. So let's graph this. What's going on at negative one? It's negative one. 
it's a vertical asymptote. It's not a pole. Poles are zero over zero, but if they give a zero in front of it, it's a vertical asymptote. So they're asking us the limit as we approach it from the left. So we're coming from the left side of our graph, following the function. Where is it going? Down. It's going to negative infinity. Okay, so this limit is equal to negative infinity. The right-handed limit for this function would be positive infinity because from the right side our function is increasing, the right-handed limit would be positive infinity. Okay, technically you can use your calculator to evaluate any of these limits. Okay, I'm just, since I'm teaching you, I'm going to teach you the way I teach you in calculus because these are our frequent and natural questions in calculus. Alright, let's look at 47. The limit as we approach negative 3. Now this one's not a one-sided limit. This one's a two-sided limit. So again, we should always try and plug it in first because a lot of times there's not a problem. Okay, so negative 3 squared is positive 9 on the top, but when we plug negative 3 into the bottom, we get 0. So we need to look at our calculator again. So let's plug it into our y equals negative x squared over 3x plus 9. Make sure your 3x plus 9 is in parentheses. You could put parentheses around the x squared, but you really don't need it. So as we approach negative 3, negative 3 again is a vertical class in code because it causes us to divide by 0. From, this is a two-sided limit. So it's not a negative or positive after the number, so we got to look at both sides. From the left, it's increasing to positive infinity. From the right, it's decreasing to negative infinity. Those don't agree. This limit does not exist. Okay? So two-sided limits, you've got to check both sides. If they don't agree, then your limit doesn't exist. And if they do not agree, then your limit does not exist. The limit doesn't exist. The, the limit is asking what y value are we approaching as we're approaching a particular x value. So as we're approaching negative 3, what y value are we approaching? Well, from the right, we're going towards positive infinity. From the left, we're going to negative infinity. So I, I can't reconcile those two different things. So that's why it doesn't exist. Because there's not one specific value that it's heading to. Alright, so um, before I overload you with information, 